Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want you to sit down. Sit down in the Holy Ghost. What I want to discuss this morning is a topic the Holy Ghost has led in my heart. And this topic this morning, I know it's for somebody who is hearing the sound of my voice, whether in this auditorium this morning or watching me from any part of the world. And my topic is a question to somebody. And I pray that God in his infinite mercy and grace and glory shall give us an answer. And hear me to somebody who shall believe this morning. Your enemy shall be put to shame. I want to discuss on a topic that says, who wants me dead? It's a question mark. Who wants me dead? I have discovered that any time a soul is born, let me tell you, from the time your mother conceived you, there is every possibility that nobody wants you dead. But I want to say something to you. Immediately from the time you are born, you began to have an enemy. Somebody say an enemy. And when you begin to have an enemy, you'll be shocked to realize that somebody wants you dead. But there is something that is not giving me confidence that he never started today. He started a long time ago. He fought for the foundation of the world. When Satan misbehaved, he needed everything the Lord has labored for to be dead. When Jesus came, everything he was laboring for, Judas sold it just for a day to make sure that Jesus himself shall be killed. There is something that I've discovered that anybody who always wants you dead is in the category of relationship. Let me say that again. Anybody who wants you dead is always at the category of what? Relationship. I have discovered that major people that want us dead always either come from family, extended family, brother, sister, your business partner, your colleague in the same thing, your wife or your husband, even your child that you get back to. And I began to ask why is anybody that wants you there always related to the world relationship? Another thing that makes people to destroy somebody's life is what I call interest. I discover the history of Daniel. Take me to Daniel 6. Daniel 6, I think from verse 1 to 5. But let me prophesy to somebody. As you're moving into the month of April by tomorrow, God of satisfaction, God of grace and mercy, God of mountain of grace and glory, shall uphold you and put your enemies to shame. Amen. Say a better amen. Let me hear. Daniel 6 from verse 1 to 5. Uh -huh. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes. Now the king, a man known as King Darius, decided to set, let me use the word committee, with prince and president. Go ahead. We should be over the whole kingdom. We should be over the whole kingdom where he rules. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first. Daniel was first among them. That the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Uh -huh. Verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princes. Now, Daniel was loved. Daniel was preferred above every other people that were selected to reign 
and look into affairs that is going on in those kingdoms to bring reports. Because an excellent spirit was in him. The reason was because it was discovered that an excellent spirit was in Daniel. And the king thought to set him over the whole rim. Uh -huh. Then the president and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Now understand this. Now because Daniel was preferred among all people that were chosen, they now decided to do whatever they can to make sure that Daniel is killed, Daniel is destroyed. They began to form an accusation. Understand this particular scripture. People who are now interested to destroy Daniel was not the people who were interested to kill him when he was born. It was people who were interested to kill him because interest was involved and they were appointed to do the same thing. But Daniel was preferred, so his colleagues decided to destroy him. Can I prophesy to you? Anywhere you do your business, wherever you go, whatever you do, if your colleagues desire to kill you, God will disgrace them one after the other. Amen. But they could find no occasion, no faults. They found nothing. They found nothing. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Hmm. Hmm. Then said this man, <laughs> We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, hmm. except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Hmm. Then this president and princes assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto the king, King Darius liveth forever. Mm. Verse 7. Okay, now. They now had a plan. Let's not take the scriptures down, but you can read it down in chapter 6 of Daniel. They did everything they could to plot something against Daniel. Only because Daniel was preferred. Let me tell you, anybody that wants you dead must want you dead either for something. Either they believe that your existence is hindering them for success. Either they believe you're doing better than them. Either they believe you're shining more than them. Either they believe you know have equally discovered that there are people who want you dead not because you are hindering them anything. They just saw you and they hate you for no reason. They don't want your success in anything. In your business, they don't want to see your success. In your ministry, they don't want to see your success. What wrong have you done? Nothing. But they just want you out of the way. Can I prophesy? God, who seeth everything that seeth in the dark and the light, shall protect you and put whoever that wants you dead to pay with his or her head in Jesus' name. And because of this, they wanted to destroy Daniel. They set up a plan to destroy him. Did the plan work? Yes. It worked. They got him. And Daniel was arrested. But the end justified that God was involved. Can I prophesy? Every plot against you, the end will justify that the finger of God is upon you. I didn't hear you. I said it means we justify that the kingdom of God, that the finger of God is upon you. Let me tell you, some people in life has been afflicted with rejection. When you go through the spiritual realm, you will understand that what is going on in your life is a manipulation from the kingdom of darkness. To make sure that anything that concerns you does not work. To make sure that everything about your family does not work. To make sure everything about you does not work. They want everything that concerns you dead. But I have a job. That those who believe in Christ, their story will not end in shame, but their story will end in glory. Celebrate Jesus here. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Let me say something. I have discovered that For somebody to kill you that easily, he might have an access to you or things that concern you. But what baffles me is, why is it that the majority of people that want you there are those closer to you? Your business partners, your wife, your husband, your children, your brother, your uncle, your colleague, your staffs under you. 
are the ones who do not want you alive. And because we have discovered that, we have equally discovered that allowing God to dwell in us, we make the enemy to have a very long way to go for them to have access to your life. Brother, if you want to kill me, you will go through Christ before you get to me. And for that acknowledgement alone, nobody will touch my hair. If I die today, it is only to the glory of God, not a premature death. Can I prophesy to somebody? Every enemy that wants you dead will pay with your hair. I say every enemy that wants you dead will pay with your hair. I say every enemy that wants you dead will pay with your hair. I have discovered that sometimes people want you dead because of your own property. They just want to take you because of what belongs to you. You ride a car, they began to plan how to take you and take that car. And for anybody to take your car, that person must either be your brother or your business partner, you know, that kind of thing. So, for anybody who dreams to kill you, must be somebody who are so close to you, who are so related to you. When I read the history of David, when he became interested in another person's property, and he did everything to make sure that he kills that person and takes the person's property. And God said, I am displeased with you for what you have done. Take me to second Samuel. When you go home, you read from verse 1, but take me to 14 and 17 because I want to be fast this morning. Now, I'm about to pray for you for the month of April. Second Samuel chapter 11 from verse 14. Second Samuel chapter 11 from verse 14. To 17, yes. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab. And now, hear this. He said, it came to pass in the morning that who wrote a letter? David wrote a letter to Joab. He wrote a letter that this letter should be given to who? Joab. A man called Joab. Now, hear this. Joab was a man who will position anybody in the front or in the back when they go to battle. He was in charge as a director, a captain, to place anybody in the order of the king, which is King David. Now, a letter was written for that man to be handed over. To be handed over to Joab. Yes, sir. And sent it by the hand of Uriah. Now, hear this. Kai, Kai, Kai. The Bible says, now, David wrote this letter and gave it to a man called who? Uriah. Called who? Uriah. Uriah. To give to who? Joab. Joab. Now, hear this. This is a shocking story. Now, the letter David wrote and gave to Uri. Kai, come. Come. I, I want to show you something. Stand here. Now, I wrote a letter. I said, David. Then I took this letter and I gave it to Yura. I said, Yura, when you go to this man called Jua, give him this letter. Hold on. Now, Yura collected the letter and started going to Jua to give the letter. The shocking story is this that what was contained in the letter was what will kill Yura. He was holding his death sentence. But he was not aware. And the answer to that death was that he will give this letter to this man. And what is the content of this letter? Jua, make sure you will put Uri in front wall where the heat is so much and where the fight will not prevail him to come back. But he must do what? Die. So that when you die, we die. I, David, we do what? Possess realize wife. Property. 
Somebody say, God forbid. Do you know one day I was thinking of something? How could it be that they gave Yura a letter that would sentence him to die? Could you imagine one thing? That when you were walking with this letter, suddenly something touched you. You now decide to open the letter. And it will be a very big shock on you that when you open that letter, that you see that what was written in it was something that will sentence you to death. My brother, will you take that letter to Joab? No, you will destroy the letter. Let me tell you, anybody that has written a letter that will sentence you to death, on your way of that letter to get to where it's going, uh, they will meet their destruction, sir. Daniel said, when Daniel was in Jerusalem, he woke up one evening. He was walking down. He now saw a woman, a beautiful woman. The Bible said a beautiful woman. And why I was angry in this scripture was that when, when David saw the woman, he equally went and made a query of who the woman is. So Daniel, sorry, David did not perform what he did by ignorance. He was aware that that woman was a wife of another man. Only the dream of David was to kill the man and take the wife. Kai, who wants to kill you because of your property? God will destroy them. Now for you to see how it is, when Ibu Yurai came to see David, when he was about to go, the Bible said now David wrote a letter gave to him his death sentence. He said, go and give to Joab. Now, it was for him to give to Joab. Now, he gave it to Joab. Joab opened and read it and had no option to take Uri and fix him in front wall. And the Bible said, and Uri died in that place. And Daniel was, uh, David was so happy and went and took the wife of Uri. Somebody's property. There are so many of you here. The enemy wants to destroy you because of your property. Can I prophesy here? I can hear you. I said, can I prophesy here? Lift up your two hands. Let me prophesy. Anybody that wants to kill you because of your property, God could destroy them one after the other. Their family will pay one after the other. Their children will pay one after the other. Whoever that shall rise against you, God will rise against them. Whoever that wants to take you because of what belongs to you, God will fight your battle. God will destroy them. God will disgrace them. If you believe it, say amen with fire. Amen. Fire. Lead Alabusha. Sit, sit down. Huh. I began to imagine. How come maybe? That Ura was going with this letter. Suddenly, something touched him. He said, let, let me even see what the king wrote. And he brought it out. Lo and behold, he began to see. Uh, Joab, make sure you fix Ura in the front wall where he will never return alive so that he will die. And the man, I began to imagine, this man will say, no, no, no. Let me see if this is true. He has to wipe, he will wipe his face and wipe his eye clearly. When he reads it again and see it, my brother, Go to hell with you and your kingship. You and I would have torn that letter. I want to pray for somebody. Whoever that is close to you that you love so much, that will want to use that means of love to destroy your destiny, may God fight your battle, reveal to you, and scatter that evil. Who wants to kill me? Who wants to kill me? Who wants to kill me? God will kill them. I say on my behalf, God will kill them. Holy Ghost got careful talent. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. <laughs> when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Lift up your hands, I want to prophesy. As I'm moving into the month of April, 
every trap of death against you. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, 8, shall return back to the sender. Every map of death, no matter how it is, every trap of death by your neighbor, by your brother, by your sister, by your uncle, by your mother, by your father, by your children, I prophesy that evil trip, that evil trap in the name of Jesus, we catch the center in the name of Jesus. I said we catch the center in the name of Jesus. Who wants to kill me? God go kill them all. I said God go kill them all. I said God go kill them all. Ha! Ha! me and Bonnie one is you turn right neighbor. Jegwa ferole, abu mi embu, akonye roka, ahonanya, konye roka, ahonanya, konye roka, ahonanya, konye roka, ahonanya. Unto the Lord be the glory. Praise and honor. Unto the Lord, be the glory, praises be unto God. Open the heaven, let your power come, O oh Lord. Open the heaven, let your power come. Lift up your two hands. Who wants me dead? Who? Who? Where are they? I say, open the heaven. Let your power come. Oh, Lord. Open the heaven. Let your power come. Anybody that wants you that whether not your mama, your papa, no care, whether not your wife or husband, no care, whether your children, your blood relative, no care. Anybody that wants you that may the ground open. Let it swallow them in the name of Jesus. Whoever that wants your marriage to crash, whoever that wants your business to crash, whoever that is sending out of sickness in your life, whoever that has caused you barrenness. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I say, let heaven open and fight your battle for you. Let God open and swallow them. Let victory be there. And let fellow be theirs. Say better, amen. Amen. Who wants me there? Who wants me there? God. God. He paid the he did not owe. I owed it them, I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I can see a brand new song, amazing grace. Lord Jesus paid it that I could never pay. Up your hands, you are going to pray this prayer. Whoever that is sending you a death sentence, uh huh. God of heaven, whoever that is sending me a death sentence, God of heaven, pay them in their own coin. God of heaven, put them to shame. Lift up your hands, say, My father. I can't hear you. Say, my father, in the name of Jesus, whosoever sending me a death sentence, by the name of Jesus, I command that death sentence 
back to your sender. Back to your sender. Back to your sender. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Malalabo shakat. Oh yes. It's not by mind. It's not by mind. Oh, it's not by mind. Oh, my mysterious self that love. Pray, 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 pray. It's not Whoever now is sending me that sentence, God, I return it back to sender. Anybody sending me that sentence. I return it back to Santa in the name of Jesus. Every death sentence is returning back to Santa. God destroyed them. Disgrace them. Anybody sending me a death sentence? Uh -huh. By the Spirit says the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus, the Lord we pray. You are going to pray as we are moving into the month of April. Anybody sending me a death sentence in April, that person will pray with his head. In this month of April, I and my family shall not die. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Aha. Ah, I shall not die. The glory and the grace of God will reign, we reign, we reign. By my spirit, says the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus, the Lord we pray. Put your right hand on your face. Say, My Father. Say, My Father. This month of April, as I move into it, I will prosper. I'll be favored by men and women, financial breakthrough, business breakthrough, good health and protection. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Martin April will favor me. Most variable. Mountain of sickness. Most variable. Thank you, Lord. Mountain of sadness. Thank you, Father. Most variable. By my spirit. spirit. In Jesus, the Lord, we pray. I pray for our viewers across the world that by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as you're moving into the month of April, God will bless you. Whatever you desire, lay your hands, God will prosper you. For all of you in different countries of the world, expecting God for your documents to be approved, your citizenship, your documents to be released. I prophesy from this altar that it shall be released in this month of April. Your testimony shall be heard across the world. I prophesy to every soul believing God for the truth of the womb. The Lord will open your womb and in the name of Jesus you shall conceive. April is coming with good things. Bad news will never be thy portion in Jesus' name. I pray for everybody hearing the sound of my voice that is saying amen. May the Lord grant you the miracle of your heart desire. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Can somebody say a louder amen? amen.